Imagine a neonatal ICU where every beep could mean the difference between life and a long-term disability. In these critical first moments, an infant's brain is a whirlwind of activity, making it hard to spot abnormal patterns like seizures, which can strike without warning and have devastating effects. Traditional detection methods can be slow and rely heavily on expert analysis. But what if we could use advanced technology to stay one step ahead? Enter machine learning and a revolutionary approach that transforms how we monitor and predict seizures in newborns. Today, we'll explore how machine learning is not just a futuristic concept, but a life-saving reality. Welcome to a new era of early detection and intervention for our most vulnerable patients. My name is Sonali Santosh, and I was mentored by David D. And I'm currently presenting from Washington State, and my talk will be on Cracking the Caesar Code, Evaluating Recurrent Neural Network Effectiveness in Early Neonatal Caesar Prediction from EEG Data. 260. 260 newborns are born every single minute, and within the time I complete this presentation, over 2,000 infants will be born throughout the world, and at least seven of those newborns will end up suffering from neonatal seizures. Now, first of all, we must discuss what neonatal refers to. Neo comes from Greek and means the words new, and natal comes from the Latin word natus, which means to be born. So let's break this down. A neonate refers to a newborn within the first four weeks of, a of its life, a critical period where the brain is particularly vulnerable. During this time, the neonatal brain undergoes rapid changes, beginning at a period of high risk for various neurological conditions. One of the most frequent neurological conditions in newborns is neonatal seizures. Some neonatal seizures are mild and short-lived, and do not cause any lasting health problems. However, prolonged and untreated seizures can cause permanent damage. For context, this is what EEG data looks across the channels during normal brain activity. And this is what it looks like during a seizure. Neonatal seizures can occur due to a variety of factors, some of which include lack of oxygen before or during birth, stroke, and cranial blood clots. Furthermore, here are some more clear signs and symptoms of neonatal seizures seen in newborns. Currently, expert neurologists are able to diagnose seizures in neonates through analyzing the patient's EEG data, which measures the general electrical activity in various regions of the brain. However, the process is quite expensive, time-consuming, and doesn't guarantee 100% accuracy, as annotations do vary from expert to expert, so having a faster yet still effective method would be very beneficial. This slide illustrates the hierarchical relationship between artificial intelligence, machine learning, and neural networks. At the broadest le level, AI encompasses any technique that enables machines to mimic human learning. Within AI, machine learning represents a subset where systems improve their performance on tasks through experience as they're exposed to more data over time. And neural networks are an even more specific type of machine learning model. A neural network is basically modeled after the neurons in the brain. In its most basic form, it would look like this, composed of three different types of layers, an input layer, a hidden layer, and an output layer. The input layer receives the data, the hidden layer processes that information, and the output layer gives the final result. In my project, I decided to use a recurrent neural network, a special type of neural network that deals with sequential data, making it ideal for analyzing time series data like EEG signals where the order of the information is crucial for predicting events such as seizure onset. This leads to my research question. How effective are recurrent neural networks in predicting the onset of seizure activity in neonates using EEG data? And can they outperform traditional methods in terms of early detection time? Since live data collection wasn't possible, we turned to utilizing online data sets instead. We needed good quality data, matching annotations, and large diversity. I found that in a data set labeled a data set of neonatal EEG recordings with Caesar annotations available on Zenodo. The dataset had EDF files available for 79 term neonates and was recorded from the neonatal intensive care unit at the Helensky University Hospital. The EEG data was annotated by three neurologists and had a variance of Caesar consensus variability. Now, moving on to the pre-processing done on this dataset. 
After I imported the necessary libraries and the EEG data, I removed the electrocardiogram and respiratory effort channels to prevent contamination on the pure EEG data. I then filtered the data from 0.1 to 15 Hertz because this range captures the relevant brainwave frequencies associated with the neonatal seizures while minimizing noise. Afterwards, I split the data into epochs of one second each, meditating the, matching the annotations for a total of 6,993 for patient one. Though this number did vary from patient to patient as they were recorded for various amounts of time. Then I took the CSV files from the three neurologists and combined them into an array so that they would take the majority case for the output of the annotations. Furthermore, I calculated the power spectral density, time domain features, and statistical features of the filtered split EEG data and combined them into a three-dimensional array ready for the neural network. I then set the data to have a train test split of 80 to 20 and standardized the data for further accuracy. Lastly, I used SMOTE to account for the imbalance between the two classes, as there are more instances of normal brain activity than there are of seizure activity. Furthermore, we now must discuss model development. I built the model using the Keras sequential model, which is great for stacking layers easily. I used two bidirectional LSTM layers with 64 units each to capture the temporal dependencies. To try to avoid overfitting, I added dropout, batch normalization, and regularization. I then wrapped things up with two dense layers. I used the Atom Optimizer because of its fast convergence, set a 0.01 learning rate, and trained the model for 50 epochs using binary cross entropy loss. Now we finally get to move on to what we've been waiting for. Results. First, my model achieved an accuracy of 88% at a threshold of 0.5. While this is a solid result, it is worth noticing that during the training, the model achieved a higher accuracy of 98.5%. This discrepancy suggests that our model might be overfitting, meaning it performs better on training data than on unseen data. Next, let's examine our confusion matrix. This shows how well our model predicts positive and negative labels. The matrix reveals a strong tendency of the model to favor negative classes meaning it's more likely to predict a negative outcome, which in our case would be normal brain activity instead of a seizure. This slide also displays a few other metrics, such as the prediction value, or when the model says something is positive, how often is it right? Recall value, or out of all the actual positives, how many did the model catch? And the F1 score, which averages the two. Figures five and six display the ROC curves, which illustrate the trade-off between the true positive rate and the false positive rate at various threshold settings. The curve shows a reasonably good area under the curve, but we can see from the zoomed in portion at figure six that the model's performance is less robust at certain thresholds, especially in distinguishing positive cases. Moving on to limitations. There's still quite a lot of work needed to be done on this model to better boost accuracy and minimize loss. But something extremely important to state is that the three neurologist annotations were not identical. And there are always plenty of cases in real life of misdiagnosis in scenarios like this, whether by a human or AI. However, it is still important to fine tune our model as much as possible. Like we discussed previously, my model still does struggle with overfitting. Another issue to discuss is whether we might prefer to optimize for precision, fewer false positives, or recall, fewer false negatives. First of all, as you can see in figure seven, while my training loss is decreasing, my validation loss is doing the exact opposite, indicating the severe overfitting issue. And while in figure eight, the validation accuracy does seem to have increased since the initial value, it does not nearly do as well as the training accuracy here in blue. Another issue is whether we want to prioritize false negatives or false positives. Think of precision as a marksman. When they take a shot, you want it to hit the target. High precision means most shots hit the target. However, this does lead to a lot of false negatives, meaning the model is predicting Caesar activity as normal brain EEG data. Recall, on the other hand, is like a net. You want it to catch as much as possible. High recall means your net catches nearly everything it's supposed to. However, that does lead to a higher number of false positives, causing the model to predict normal activity as Caesar data. As you can see, both sides have their risks. 
Early detection and intervention are crucial for improving survival rates. However, false positives may lead to the administration of anti-epileptic drugs or other interventions that are not needed, potentially exposing the newborn to harmful side effects without any real benefit. The optimal goal will always be to achieve the high precision value from the false negatives and the high recall value from the positives to optimize our F1 score and accuracy to the max, taking the best of both worlds. However, there is still a lot of research needed for us to do that. In my further research, I will explore more sophisticated data augmentation techniques to further mitigate class imbalance and improve the generalization of the model. Combining recurrent neural networks with other deep learning architectures, such as convolutional networks, may offer better performance by capturing both spatial and temporal features of the EEG data. One would also need to optimize recurrent neural networks for real-time implementation, which is essential for clinical use. Overall, there is still a long way to go in my research in which I can better fine-tune my model in terms of accuracy and loss. And yet it was still a very interesting experience as I was a complete beginner to Python and machine learning in the beginning of this project. Therefore, this research demonstrates that recurrent neural networks are effective in predicting the onset of seizure activity in neonates using the EEG data. The promising results suggest that recurrent neural networks could significantly enhance the timeliness and accuracy of neonatal seizure detection in the future, potentially leading to better clinical outcomes. Combining AI's quick computational abilities with the clinician's empathy and observational skills could be a powerful combination in the future of healthcare. Thank you all for your time today, and here are my resources.